To build a successful hook compost, you'll need to know these five requirements. Welcome to Food Forest Living, where we adapt our lives to grow more and use less. Firstly, your compost pile must be 3 by 3 by 3 feet at the minimum in order to achieve the heat needed for an effective hot compost. This amount of biomass is essential to create a big enough volume of material where microbes have the space to reproduce and generate heat. Secondly, temperatures should ideally be between 55 degrees Celsius and 65 degrees. This range is where microbes can survive and work hard to consume and break down the pile. These temperatures will also be able to kill pathogens, most weeds, and weed seeds. If the compost gets hotter than 71 degrees Celsius, the microbes will die and the process will need to be restarted as the pile will cool. Turning the pile is essential for temperature control and aeration. In order to reach these temperatures, you will need to master step three. You'll need oxygen by turning and to water as needed to maintain a 50-50% moisture content. To learn how to test for optimal water content in your hot compost, watch my step-by-step -step compost video for more details. I'll put the link in the description. Thirdly, the carbon to nitrogen ratio. This is ideally 30 carbon to one nitrogen. Different materials are composed of unique ratios of carbon and nitrogen. To view an easy to read chart, refer to the chart on page 9 in my compost guide that I have linked below. Typically, a material that has a high amount of carbon will have a greater than 30 to 1 ratio, such as sawdust, which can be about 200 to 500 carbon to 1 nitrogen. Materials rich in nitrogen will have a ratio less than 30 to 1, such as coffee grounds, which are typically 20 to 1. A mistake many beginner gardeners can make about the ratios is not understanding that each material is comprised of their own ratio. The optimal 30 to 1 brown to green ratio does not mean adding 30 handfuls of leaves with one handful of grass clippings. A compost like that will take a very long time to decompose because there's too much carbon and not enough nitrogen. By knowing the approximate carbon to nitrogen ratio of the materials that you wish to use, we can do the math and see how much of each we need to add. Since most people have leaves and grass available, let's go over this common example. Leaves have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 60 to 1. Grass has a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 20 to 1. So how can we make this to be about 30 to 1? We can add one part leaves and two parts grass. The math looks like this. 60 plus 20 plus 20 equals 100. We then divide 100 by 3 parts. This is equal to 33 to 1, which is about what we're looking for in the garden. If you make your compost pile this way and find it doesn't get hot enough, you can add in a fine nitrogen material such as coffee grounds to bring the ratio a little closer to 30 to 1. The fourth requirement. For hot compost, it is best to use smaller material rather than large material. If our material is too large in size, we need to consider a couple things. The availability of carbon and the speed of our compost. If we want better, more consistent texture of compost in less time, know that small materials break down faster and a little more consistently. The importance of carbon availability is that the increased surface area of the smaller materials provide a greater amount of energy for breakdown. When large materials get used, there's less surface area exposure, which means there's less available carbon to be used in relation to the amount of nitrogen also available. And if the microbes don't have access to sufficient carbon energy in relation to the amount of nitrogen there is to consume, this can result in a smelly and imbalanced pile. So we need to think about appropriate sizes to mix into our compost and if you have larger material to use as, as compost and you would like to add that in, just consider the balance of the carbon to nitrogen ratio that you might be creating. Fifth requirement for hot compost is turning it. Turning your compost is essential to an efficient, earthly smelling pile. 
We want our hot compost to be in an aerobic state. The aerobic state means that the microbes in there are working hard, breaking a sweat to ensure that they can break down your materials in a reasonable amount of time. Secondly, heat. Without oxygen, our compost won't be hot compost. Oxygen is part of heat building cycles. The heat of our compost will also kill pathogens, most weeds, and weed seeds when exposed to the optimal range of 55 to 65 degrees Celsius for at least three days. Turning the pile also allows for all the materials to be exposed to this range of heat as the outer shell of our pile stays cooler than the inner core. Turning it inside out frequently every couple of days is how we ensure the entire pile gets a chance to break down in the heat of the center. This Berkeley method of hot composting recommends turning your compost every second day for efficiency. If you want to read the actual PDF to the Berkeley hot composting system, I'll link it below. Please subscribe and hit the bell so that together we can grow more, use less, and thrive.